Hello, <laughs> my name is Mary O'Malley. I'm an author and a counselor in private practice in Kirkland, Washington. And I am delighted to share with you about my latest book called What's in the Way is the Way. To get a sense of what this book is about, I want to share with you a really wonderful quote by the beloved mythologist Joseph Campbell, where he says, People say that what we're searching for is the meaning to life. I don't think that's what we're searching for at all. What we're searching for is the experience of being alive, so that our experiences on the physical plane resonate in our very innermost being, and we again know the rapture of being alive. Most of us don't know the rapture of being alive. Most of us live in a constant, low-grade struggle, trying to do life and do it right. It wasn't always that way. When we were very young, we were wide open to life. There were no thoughts in our head. There was no self-image yet. And then slowly and surely, a self-image began to develop. And we pulled ourselves up and out of our bodies and we got caught in our heads. And they say we have 65,000 thoughts a day and 95% of them are repeats from the day before. How I describe this is with a metaphor in the first chapter called the meadow metaphor. Imagine a beautiful meadow. Everything flows in the meadow. The flowers appear and then they disappear and Winter comes and then spring comes and the water flows from the mountain and the wind flows. There is nothing in this meadow that resists the flow of life. And yes, there is death, there is loss, there is violence, but there is no resistance. The fir tree doesn't wish it was the maple tree. The plants don't resist the coming of winter. This is the meadow where you and I lived. But imagine all those clouds in the sky slowly and surely coming down, getting lower and lower, and then beginning to whirl and swirl around your head as a child. And slowly and surely your experience of the meadow is blocked because you pay attention to just the thoughts in your head. I call it in the book, the storyteller in your head that tells all sorts of stories all day long. And if you had a little door in the front of your forehead and you would open up and watch a ticker tape, you would see how much it likes this, but it doesn't like that. It wants this, but it doesn't want that. And that is the world of struggle that we have all crawled into. Many of the struggles are very minor, like a spot on our shirt or the length of the stoplight, but there are other bigger struggles. But the truth of it is, is there are no problems in your life except in your mind. Yes, there are challenges, but there are no problems. So in this book, we look about how to rediscover the meadow again, the joy of being alive, and it isn't from trying to get back to the meadow. That's more struggle. It's about learning how to see and dissolve with your own living attention your cloud bank of struggle so that then the meadow is revealed to you and you again know the joy of being alive. So in chapter two we look at what is it like to live from the meadow, the, the flow, the ease, the spaciousness the delight. And then we begin to get familiar with the cloud bank of struggle. And so in the third chapter we look at how it is based on fear. And fear is nothing to be afraid of and yet we are always trying to manage our own fear. This chapter is how you can see fear, how you can get to know your fears so that you can move from, I am so afraid, to, oh, this is the story of fear. 
In the fourth chapter, we look at something that's very, very important, and that is to know you're never alone. In your cloud bank of struggle, you do feel very alone. And yet, the intelligence at the heart of life is keeping pace with you every step of the way in your life. In chapter 5, we begin to develop the most important tool that a human being has, and that is their own curiosity. And in chapter 6, we look about how you can take this curiosity into your daily life. Curiosity doesn't fight with anything. Curiosity gets to know what is going on. And then in chapter 7, we bring it all into the heart, for the heart is where all true healing happens. We all had such an innocent, beautiful heart when we were born. And then slowly and surely it had to shut down as we ran away to a conceptual world. And this chapter is how to open that heart again and how to combine curiosity and your heart together into what I call compassionate curiosity. Chapter 8 is about stories of people that are living their life in this way and how compassionate curiosity dissolves their own cloud bank so that they can come back to the joy of being alive. In chapter 9 we get into the heart of it and that is that your life is for you. This is where the title of the book is, What's in the Way is the Way. In your whole life there's only one of two experiences you're having. One, life is inviting you into this living moment with everything that you long for that is right here. Or, it's giving you experiences to help you see your own cloud bank so you can dissolve it with your compassionate curiosity. And so this is where the subtitle of the book comes into play. The transforming power of trusting your life. All of it. As you read this chapter, you will no longer be a victim to your life. You will know that your life is happening for you. In chapter 10, we'll take a look at four steps that you can bring into your life that will help you remember this everything that we have explored together, no matter what is happening in your life. And in chapter 11, you will discover that you are being given this gift of healing your cloud bank, not only for yourself, but for the world, because you are a part of this world. And as you clear your own cloud bank, you become a healing presence in the world. There's a wonderful thing about this book. It isn't about just taking in all of this information. All the way through the book, you are invited to pause and really, truly open to life right here, right now. And at the end of each chapter is what I call a remembering session, where you're invited for at least five minutes every day to develop compassion and curiosity so that you, too, can dissolve your cloud bank and come back to life. So if this intrigues you, you can find out more about the book and other books and CDs that, uh, that I offer at my website, maryomalley.com. And there will be also information about a free webinar I'll be doing on the book and also a 12-week class so we can walk through the book together. So thank you for listening, and thank you for being willing to heal your own cloud bank so that our world may be healed. Namaste.